Good morning. Happy Monday. It is snowing here again. It's going to ice here again. Um, so we're a little chilly. Um, let's see. First, so you can be finding your place. We're in Mark 6, 53 to 56 today. Mark 6, 53 to 56. That's today's gospel. Um, I want to apologize last week for the day that I said I would join you in the evening and then I didn't join you then either. Um, a bunch of things came up. But what was interesting to me was how many of you were excited about doing an evening Bible study. Um, I admit straight up that evening is not really my best time. Um, I tend to be low energy in the evening. But um, it was interesting and because it, you responded so enthusiastically. Um, so it has me thinking that maybe we need to add some kind of evening component every once in a while. Maybe we'll have like a Wednesday night club or something where we do it in the evening. Um, I'll talk to Michaela. We'll see what we can do. I like to start my day with scripture because I feel like that gives me a guiding light for the whole day. Um, but I am open to the possibility that reflection at the end of the day might be a good thing too. So we'll look into that. But for today, it is morning, it is Monday, and we are in Mark. So let's start with the Holy Spirit prayer, and then we'll be in Mark 6, 53, right? In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created, and you will renew the face of the earth. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant that by the same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever enjoy his consolations through Christ our Lord. Amen. All right. So, Mark 6, 53. When they had crossed over, they came to land at Genesaret and moored to the shore. And when they got out of the boat, the people immediately recognized him and ran about the whole region and began to bring the sick people on their beds to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he came, in villages, cities, or countryside, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and implored him that they might touch even the fringe of his garment. And as many as touched it were made well. I have... Um, I don't want to say physical fitness, but yeah, kind of physical fitness, physical healing on my mind a lot lately. Um, we're going to launch into something during Lent. Um, we're going to do the wellness revelation in the take up and read community. But, um, but the last year or so has kind of been a, a slow realization that God really does care about the fitness of my body. Like it matters to him. It's not superfluous. Um, I don't know why it took me this long to figure out that I do life in my body, right? So of course he would care about it. Um, but to that end, I look at passages like this and I think, how could I have missed all along how actively Jesus's ministry, especially in the beginning, was about healing the physical. Like he went after the people who were physically afflicted or he welcomed the people who were physically afflicted and he started there. He did that first. So he was surrounded. We read that they were people were coming from the whole region, the villages, the cities, the countryside, all the sick. They were bringing them. This was a lot of suffering, physically suffering people. And Jesus brought, they brought them to Jesus so that he could even they could even touch the fringe of his garment. So they probably heard about the woman with the hemorrhage, right? And they reached out with even just a little bit of faith. And he began working in them by healing them physically. So the physical transformation that these people experienced got them started in the right direction towards a greater spiritual one. But it was the pivotal first step. Jesus' care for the physical part of us can be the, piv the pivotal first step towards a greater spiritual um, transformation. Jesus' physical healings 
were outward manifestations of his spiritual healings. He understood that these people lived in their bodies and they were dependent on their bodies for their livelihoods. Like nobody could be a couch potato making a living on the internet. You had to be able to physically work in order to live. Um, so there's no disconnect. He begins with the physical and he moves to the spiritual. He doesn't ignore the body. Instead, he begins with the body. He restores health and then he recreates these people. He transforms these people. He conforms them to his likeness, to his wellness to his wholeness. And that's what he wants. He wants them to be restored to a whole likeness in the image of their creator. And that doesn't mean that everybody needs to be physically perfect or, um, or even healed from a physical illness in order to be healed spiritually. God heals lots of people spiritually while they are still struggling with physical infirmities. That just means that in this instance and many other instances throughout the, the gospel, there is that recognition that Jesus cares about these people's bodies and he begins there with them. It sets them off on a path that results in a total transformation of all of them. Um, people who were physically unwell. You know, these people who were coming to him um, on their beds to wherever they heard he was. They were physically unwell. They were physically dependent on somebody else for everything because they couldn't work in a society that was very dependent on manual labor. These people have an immediate appreciation for who Jesus is because he has made an immediate impact on the life they are living in the world. He heals them physically and they begin to understand, tangibly, touchably understand that this man is capable of working miracles, that there's more to him than just being a man. What he can do if he can miraculously heal their bodies is an indicator of what he can do to heal their minds, to heal their souls, to make them whole. He begins with the physical and then he transforms their entirety. There's a lot to ponder here. There's a lot to think about in terms of inviting Jesus to partner with us in physical wellness, in addition to spiritual wellness. When was the last time you asked God what he wanted to do, you to do in your body. What time does he want you to go to sleep? Ask God how he wants you to move today. Ask him what he wants you to eat today. Ask him to help you heal the physical things in order to make you more open to spiritual transformation. Prop your Bible open, Mark 6, 53. Read it from a different perspective. It's gonna mean something more. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.